Hello, everybody. How are you? Smart Dating Academy started a live video. Yes, they did. Hi, everyone. It feels like so long since last week because this week felt really long to you because I feel like I haven't seen you guys in days. Right, I think maybe it's because for the last few weeks I've been doing double IGs with other people um, being guests. Hi guys, thank you, it's so nice to be here. I see all of you, Bella Bubbles and Beer, I love you. That is Janet, someday we're gonna do t-shirts around that. Um, I hope you guys are doing great. Hi everybody, it feels like a long week, right? Yeah, I know. It. Uh, it absolutely does. Do you guys want to give me a one word check in besides it's been a long week? It feels like it feels like May the 217th today, doesn't it? Like it's been a it's been a while, right? You're glad the week is over. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad this week's um I'm glad it's coming to an end too. I'm really glad that we finally had some sunshine. I know you guys are all over the nation in the Midwest, we got a deluge this morning, and then it cleared up, and it's like seventy. It's like seventy percent or seventy percent, seventy degrees um, overall. So it's actually nice, and I hope it stays nice. Um, and so it's so nice to see all of you guys. I'm really excited. People are feeling chill. Um, any other one word check ins? I know. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure it's been. I, you're so glad you get the notification for this. I'm happy. I love that you guys are greeting each other in our little cocooned world here. Um, you're feeling sluggish. I hear you. Um, it does. It did start at seven, so you're all good. Seven central. Um, thank you, whoever just said they love my earrings. They are kind of fun. I'm feeling. You know, I figured I'd be floraled up for you guys today um and i taped a video i put a video on um there's a continuation of the musaka matthews story did you guys see that um last week that i um i posted about a great date that one of our clients had with a guy who um they facetimed with a couple times and he wanted um they were talking about their favorite foods and then he asked her what her favorite food was, and she said it was moussaka, and I think I told you guys the story last week, and so he brought moussaka for their socially distanced picnic, and one part of the story that I didn't tell you guys is um, that when he went to meet her, and he, he, he swore on the FaceTime call when they were having their date that he would never, he's like, this looks so hard. I've never made moussaka, um, but I know people that have, and I guess it's a really, you know, elaborate, yummy thing. And so he, um, he's like, I could never make this. This looks so hard. She's like, I know. Last time I had it, I was in Chicago when she came to see us in February. And she went, asked me, where's a good Greek restaurant? Because I love moussaka. So, so he picks her up. The moussaka's in the back seat of the car. He made, she's like, what is that? He said, you said your favorite food was moussaka. So I got a recipe and I had to actually, this is my third attempt at it because I didn't want to go cold and make it for you on my first attempt because the first two attempts kind of, uh, they they weren't very good, but this one I think is good. So now it's, it's their first date. And so he doesn't want to be like the creepy Corona guy, I guess, and saying like, hey, can I bring this into your house? So he had pre-called a gas station that was going to be on the way to where they were doing their socially distanced picnic um, and had organized to find a microwave to warm up the moussaka before they went on their date. And it was an amazing date. And I coached her afterwards and really listened for any red flags because it seemed like, you know, this is a little bit too much too soon. It wasn't. I won't bore you guys with the whole long story, but let's say if I don't think there's a red flag, there's definitely not a red flag. Um, not that you know we know after one date if somebody's going to be this person's soulmate, but he definitely was legit. So I will leave you guys with 
um, a little bit of a cliffhanger that I'm going to post a little video tomorrow to let you know what happened after their second date on Saturday. They went hiking together and it was a good date and he is quite attentive and he listens well. So look out in my, um, what do you call the thing where you post stuff? Your feed, not your stories, but your feed. And I will um, I'll post a little video. Some of you might have um, gotten. I know, my heart was melting too. She texted me um, a photo of what happened and I literally dropped my teeth and said, can I post an update about this again? So for any of you guys that have uplifting dating stories, feel free to send them to me. I'm always anonymous. People need inspiration. They love the positive dating stories. Believe me, I get the crazy bad dating stories too, but the good ones seem to light up people's heart and soul. So if you guys have them, email me, bella at smartdatingacademy.com. It will get to me. I have a great assistant who will make sure that it gets to me and I will definitely talk about you guys and your great dating stories. Um, I do have one more. I we and I might have told you about this one too. So every week we get updates, right? Because we're checking in and listening for red flags and doing accountability with all of our clients. Um, but we have a client that lives in Martha's Vineyard that has started um, corresponding with and had FaceTime dates with a gentleman in New Hampshire. They have had they have in the last six weeks they have not yet met each other. They have a routine. They do two Skypes per week at this point, but every day they write each other a letter on email. And I talked to her today and she said, Bella, we have written 45 letters to each other back and forth over the past 45 days. And the amount of things that we have discussed with each other, like as granular as, how do you, like, what time do you eat your biggest meal of the day? Okay, would it bother you if I didn't eat much after two o'clock? Like, amazing stuff. And they're falling in love with each other over Zoom and letters. And he says, I can't wait to meet you for the first time, but I want to make sure we're really safe. She's a physician, by the way. She's a doctor, so she's very attentive to the rules. And she said, well, you know, if we meet, we'll have gloves on and we'll have masks on and all that. And he says, I'm going to want to give my princess a kiss. I was like, oh. You guys, be inspired. Love is going to come to you. I'm hearing it. I'm surrounded by it. I want you guys to know these stories because I tell you the straight dope, the real truth, and there is more good right now than you know of. And I am here to tell you about the good because the good is coming to you. I love this. My 12-year-old son, Max, just patched on and said, hi. Hi, Max. Upstairs. Good kid. He's upstairs. He knows I'm on live. I told him if he stayed down here, I would introduce you. Um, oh my God. Hold on. You guys. Hold on. Who do you think is creeping around in the background here? Dun, 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 dun. Andy. Okay. And I want you to know he's been listening. So not only did he bring me my wine, I want you to see I am good and I bring myself water. He brings me wine and he wrote moussaka now first of all that was a good attempt it says moussaki no it's moussaki it's moussaki moussaki <laughs> can you believe this it's he's listening moussaki. he That's is listening to my stories i did tell him i told andy when i got the moussaka matthew update today was i so excited right and he's like that is a ridiculously cute story he's like that guy's got game i like this guy right you think moussaka matthew has game yeah, so this is your... Musaki. So Andy is trying to... Andy's trying to earn his oats here to become Musaka Andrew. Musaki Andrew. So thank you. Thank you, love. I was going to give you a hug. Um, so that is... By the way, you guys, this Sunday is our wedding anniversary. And if I tell you how many years... Yeah, flowers next. They're, now she's saying, bring me flowers. Oh, you can slide the flowers over here. You can get a really... Uh, high amount of cool points. He did bring flowers. They're a little dead. Don't judge now. These were for Mother's Day. 
so you can see, but yes, wine and flowers. So I guess he does still have game after I've been with this man for half my life. We met in high school. Um, we dated after college. So we are celebrating our 23rd, believe it or not, we were children when we got married, our 23rd wedding anniversary on Sunday, May 17th. So if you guys aren't subscribed to the Smart Dating Academy newsletter, go to smartdatingacademy.com. Fill out the contact form. We won't contact you, don't worry. Um, and that'll just get you into our newsletter database because I usually post something um, about it on our anniversary. So thank you guys. Um, so, so I did want to kick off tonight with all these good stories about love during COVID. You guys, it can definitely happen. And so your Moussaka Matthew or your Moussaka Mini for you men that are looking for women are is out there. They are waiting for you. All you have to do is date like hell to find them because we are what? We are psychotically optimistic, right? So you can you two can have your Musaki Andrew as as I have them. Thanks for all the happy anniversaries, you guys. I can't believe it. I feel like we got married. Um, we got married yesterday. Um, believe it or not. Our first dance at our wedding was the tango. I know, and I came out with a rose in my mouth and nobody knew what we were doing. Even our parents didn't know what we were doing. We took three private tango lessons and we were in our early 20s and we did it and it was hilarious and so fun. So maybe if I can find the video, I'll put it in our newsletter. So, um, so great, I have on the agenda tonight, you guys know I like to just bullet out a couple things on a topic, so, and I think of the topics the day of because that's just how I roll, it's a fast world here, and I thought about five ways to improve your likability. Last week we were talking about, you know, are you the one exhibiting red flag behaviors in your relationship, right? And I think that was a really well received one. I was a little nervous, honestly, after I put the topic out and, you know, and some, and I got some, you know, sometimes people like to send not nice notes and some people didn't like that topic. And I thought that that was red flag behavior on their part anyway, but it was a really great topic. And I'm so glad that you guys really liked it last week. I know I posted it on our YouTube channel. It's gotten a lot of looks. So we've all done the red flag behavior. So today I thought that we would flip it on its head and talk about green flag behaviors. Um, behaviors that will improve your likability. And we and you can find last week's talk by going to my YouTube channel. And definitely, you guys, subscribe to Smart Dating Academy. Go to my website because I'm posting them for people in our database that want to see these videos, but they can't make the Instagram live. So go to smartdatingacademy.com. Fill out the contact form and you'll be on our newsletter. So sometimes if you can't make these, as long as the Insta gods are smiling on us and I can capture this footage because it doesn't always happen. Sometimes we lose it. Um, I do post them on YouTube so people can refer back to them. So, oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you, I'm so glad that you liked the topics of last week and you think there are topics so well-rounded. I try. I want to teach you guys. I just hope I can keep doing these post-COVID when time becomes a little bit more restrained again post-COVID when we go back to normal life and there's, you know, softball games and basketball games that I can do every Thursday. Um, but you guys give me breath and air and I appreciate you a lot and I hope that you'll like what we are going to tell you about um, likeability. I'm going to push these flowers away because they are making my allergies go <laughs> bananas. As much as I like flowers, I'm allergic. So, um, um, I have so much to say on this topic that I'm literally just pausing to say, where do I want to begin? I think, you know, likability is something that is really crucial. And I think, you know, we all, I certainly want to think I'm likable. I think we all probably think we're pretty likable. Um, but likability at the end of the day is really crucial in all aspects of our lives, right? It's, it's obviously it's an important topic in dating, right? But it's also important. What we found is when we're teaching people the tips on how to be more likable in the dating world. So they start to get second and third and fourth dates again. Do you know what's happening? Our clients get promoted at work. 
because they're taking their likability, right? You can't, people don't have different personalities. I don't have work personality and date personality. We think we do, but at the end of the day, our personalities are pretty similar, right? And just because you might be like a fierce cutthroat trial attorney at work, that's just your role at work, but that doesn't mean you act like that around your colleagues at work, right? It means you can take on that role. So our personalities are similar. So what we see is that a lot of our clients, they start closing bigger deals. They date better. They get promoted. People at work are like, God, have you lost weight? Like, so you just seem happier, right? So it's really, um, it's a big deal. Likeability, if you think about it, we date people that we like. We end up in relationships with people that we like, at least initially, right? Just kidding. We marry people we like. We hire people that we like, right? We, we do business with people that we like. Right? So likability, you're right, Chantal, there is a crosswalk. And I, I didn't realize this and how significant of an impact it would make on people when they started to amp up their likability in the dating world and they started to internalize it because we're Pavlovian, right? If we get good response to our behavior, we do more of that. Ring the bell, the pellet comes out, you're going to go and ring the bell again, right? And it's the same thing. If you're having these behaviors that are serving you better and you're getting more dates, suddenly you start to take that to your job as well. So, um, so it's, it's all good. Hold on. I don't know why this got a little dark. Okay. That's okay. Um, so I'm the, one of the main things I can tell you is that a lot of people think likability is just something certain people are born with. And maybe some people have that more naturally than others. I have kids, I'm around a lot of kids through their friends, so I see that there are those certain kids that are just, you know, they're like, oh, hi, how are you? And, and they already exhibit those characteristics naturally, so some people get it by birthright. But the good news is, is that it's learnable, right? And I see it happen all the time with our clients. And so the number one thing um, is, I always say tip number one is be socially generous, right? Social generosity is a beautifully put, I didn't invent it. I, there's an author based out of New York who came up with this word, but she says social generosity is a fancy way of being really nice to people right? Be socially generous with people. When you see people, be friendly, make the eye contact, smile, look for what's good in someone and tell them, affirm them, see them, validate them and say it with a good look on your face. That is being socially generous. And that's very different than flattery. Flattery is BS, right? Flattery will get you everywhere, whatever, but people can detect when it's false and disingenuous. When you're being socially generous, you are looking for what's good in someone else and you are telling them you are being socially generous. You're being giving. And sometimes it, sometimes it seems intimidating for people that think, oh, am I going to seem fake or does it seem, you know, disingenuous or this person doesn't even know me. Do I seem like I'm sucking up to them or like a bootlicker? No. At the end of the day, when something is super genuine, people will know it, right? Um, and so be socially generous. And when, and there's so many times you can even stop and do that. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll be in a meeting with Lindsay, who's our head dating coach. And she will, you know, she walks into our meeting and let's say the client's already there. And I look at her, I'm like, God, she looks gorgeous. And the second I can in the subway, I'm like, I've been meaning to tell you this for the last 90 minutes. You look incredible. You look beautiful. And she's like, Oh my God, thank you so much. I, I didn't feel that way. I'm like, Oh, you walked in and you lit up the room like a chandelier. So always tell somebody, be socially generous. When you see something good, don't be shy. You are putting more love into the world. That's why we call it social generosity. When you raise, I see people talking about higher frequency. When you emit that higher frequency, you're in a good place. You're thinking good. You're speaking good. You are putting more love in the world. And what is better than that? Nothing, right? And so somebody asked, what does that look or sound like, social generosity? It means looking for what's good and telling them that, okay? And being sincere. So point number two is be positive and enthusiastic, okay? Every 
everybody in the world, the most attractive people, right? They're not necessarily the best looking people, but it's like the girl next door or that certain person that always has people around them, right? You're like, what is it about that girl? Remember the movie, Something About Mary? There's just some je ne sais quoi about this person and and they're likable. But one of this tip number two is be positive and be enthusiastic, right? People are attracted to happy, confident, positive people. And so often our brains are wired, guys, to be negative. Okay, our brains are wired to protect us, to help us survive, to look for what's bad, to look for the bad people, to look for the red flags, to look for what's not right in a situation so that we survive. But when we are not conscious of that and we stay in that zone of negativity, when we are looking for what's negative and speaking what's negative, we all know the Debbie Downers around us. It's like, oh, here comes gloom and doom Glenda, right? Everything's a dark cloud, right? And instead, what I want you to do is be that positive, enthusiastic person. Like, look, even in a world of COVID, we can talk about the good love stories and the things that are out there because people are looking for that positivity. It's like, imagine yourself as a chandelier, right? And when the light switch goes on, you light up that room with your positivity. And some of you might think to myself, I'm introverted. I'm not that positive. Listen, again, this is learnable stuff. Don't tell me I can't do this, right? Or I am like this. You have great capacity to change and to take action for the things that you want to do and the ways you want to become. You don't need to become the star, right? But you don't need to become a cloud. I just took that from somebody's com M words at the bottom. Um, I just took that. Um, from her, you don't have to be the chandelier, but don't be the cloud. If you can be the chandelier and be the person that is socially generous, and it doesn't mean that you have to be rah, rah, sis, boom, bah, but look for what's positive. Say the nice thing. Talk about what's good in your life. And don't, you're right. Just don't say that you can't do it yet. You can do it. Okay. So be positive and be enthusiastic because people are drawn to that. Think about the good things in your life. And even if life is a little sucky right now and things aren't where you want them, make that gratitude list. You guys, the days I don't make my 10 gratitudes in a day and I do it across the day, I will tell you, it takes me a day to write my 10 things down, but I start it in the morning and maybe I can end at five or six, but then I know I'm accountable to do the last 10 and hell, I will have it all done. Start your day to rewire yourself in a positive way by doing that. I love this. Janet, her match profile says happiness is a choice. If you're not happy, make a different choice. Amen. Choose to put your brain on a different frequency. Look for what's good. Be the beacon. Tell people what's good, right? And people will suddenly want to be around you because these are really appealing qualities to have. So tip number three, um, be like Bella. I love you, whoever just said that. Cheers. Should, I haven't taken my, my post-it notes. You guys remember in the first Instagram Live when Andy wrote me a note in pencil? Now he's clearly getting braver because it's like green Sharpie now. Um, he's hilarious. Cheers to you guys. Um, so tip number three, it's a tough one. Get rid, get rid of the RBF right? So now you are being socially generous. You are being your best version, whatever that is for you, ladies and gentlemen, of being more positive and being more enthusiastic. Number three is getting rid of RBF, resting bitch face, right? You have to focus on what you actually look like. So I held this love lab last Saturday and we had 11 amazing singles. Um, we had we were supposed to have 10, but we had one extra who really wanted to be in there. And it was an amazing session with the Love Lab. It was, it was phenomenal. We had the best group of singles from all around the country. Um, women, we had men. It was amazing. But one of the things that we did is we really practiced 
rest and bitch face. And we practice how to have good body language together as a group. So one of the tricks that I gave to them in the love lab, so I'm telling you guys the secret, it was so funny. I told everybody to mute their cameras and I made them all say the Pledge of Allegiance while smiling like a lunatic. And I taped it and just watching how people suddenly that were there like this during the Zoom workshop, And one woman actually raised her hand and said, I have to tell you guys, this is the best, most transformative exercise I've ever done. And I want to apologize to this group because I have been sitting here with resting bitch face the entire time. This has just rocked my world. So what I'm going to tell you guys is when now you're working on your insides, right? Being socially generous, being positive, being enthusiastic, rewiring your brain, then you got to make sure that your face matches your outlook. This is the biggest, one of the biggest things I see with people is they're happy, they're warm, but they talk like this. And they they just literally are like, yeah, it's good. I'm happy. I like it. They have no idea what their facial expressions are like. So we do this a lot and we work on body language person after person. Oh, I see you, Donna. You loved it. Yes, she was in our love lab. Um, and it is... Um, the Love Lab was amazing. So we're doing one June thirteenth. You guys should totally, um, you guys should totally join it if you want to. Um, but definitely, just do it. Say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and start to work out these muscles on your face. Okay, start to work this out. Pull your <coughs> pull your facial muscles back because it hurts to smile a lot. But I want to make sure this isn't for you guys to be fake. Okay, it's not. It's show the world. If you're feeling good, I want you to know if there's an incongruence. Sometimes we feel great, but we we just emit this like flat stone walled face. Start to work on that smile and start to watch how people respond to you as well. I love this. People are saying it was good. It was good. Thanks guys. I love these comments. What's inside is external. That's right. Put your, take your happiness on the inside because the world only knows what they see on your face. It's an effort for me. I have told you guys this, that my normal facial, I'm much more, I'm cerebral. I'm, (coughs) gosh, sorry. Allergy. Let me get some flowers. It's an effort for me to really focus on what I'm presenting to the outside world. And for me, I want to make sure that I'm presenting what's in my heart, which is positivity and happiness. And so it's important. So look more approachable and get rid of that resting bitchy face. And if you need help with it, get in on the next love lab because it was awesome. And we had individuals do it. So it's fantastic. I wish I could see all of you here and do it, but it's Instagram. So I can only chat with you guys here. I can, I can talk at you and you can chat back to me. Um, this is number four is a huge deal. Um, and it's that you've heard me say this before, listen to understand. Okay. So many of us want to talk. We want to tell people I'm so positive. I'm so enthusiastic. I'm so amazing. La la la. Instead, I want you to do the sexiest thing that you can do for someone while you're being positive and socially generous. You're going to be an amazing listener, right? And when you are talking to people, you are listening to understand them. You are listening to understand them with empathy, with compassion, with positivity. You are not listening to respond. You're listening to understand what they're trying to tell you. How was their day? How are they feeling? How are they relating to life during COVID? Maybe they've been furloughed. They've lost their jobs. Are you listening to truly understand where they are? There is nothing more appealing than an amazing listener, right? That's one of the nicest things sometimes. I remember someone said to me, you're a great listener. And I took that to heart. So like it was, it was the word, it meant so much because that I aspire to be present for people. And I know you guys are the same, but know that when you are, it's definitely noticed when you listen to understand versus listen to respond and think about in your life, who the best listeners are in your life and your relationships, right? And most likely they are super present for you. And a lot of times they're the people that we like best in our lives because they get us and they get us because they listen to understand us. Us. They're not listening to talk at us. They're not listening to give us advice. They're listening to really hear our hearts. So 
So that's what I would tell you about that. And then my fifth and final likability tip, I have a ton more, um, but because I'm only granted 60 minutes by the Instagram gods and I promised you guys q and I have a lot of those tonight too. Um, hearing and listening are two different things. You are absolutely right. Um, this is this is point number five that I wrote down here. This is a touchy one. And in person, I've given you a lot of tips. Being positive, being kind, being inspiring, being warm, being the chandelier. Now, I want you to take all of that and I want you to think about your emails and your text messages in the same way, right? I get emails from people all day, every day. Most are good. Some Whoa, gosh, that's in, I'm surprised that somebody felt at liberty to say that in an email to someone they don't know or they do know. Make sure that your tone in your email is good. Is it friendly? Is it warm? Is it engaging? Unless you are, you know, reprimanding somebody, and I would hope that, you know, you would probably reprimand them in person so they can see your tone and context, but make sure that your emails are lovely and nice. And if you don't think that they are, ask a friend for some feedback. Ask your colleagues for feedback, right? There are certain emails. I've talked to certain clients before. They're like, man, before I did this with Smart Dating Academy, like my emails would give you frostbite. And I was like, they kind of did, right? Because the emails are yes, no, I agree, right? It's like, and they they weren't like that in person, but somehow they're like, well, I'm a busy person. I don't have time to write something, you know, sparkly and nice. I'm like, you should, because this is people's perception of you. Unless, again, you're HR and you're reprimanding someone, you have to do things in a certain way, or maybe you're breaking up with somebody, whatever it is. So I love this, Chantel. I, I, I always pretend my email is a bright red neon sign that everybody can see. I tell my kids this, and I tell our clients this too. Anything that you put in digital, in writing, assume a million people will read that. And they will read it with that tone and they will read it with those words. If you're not okay with that email, with that text on Bumble or Match or to your colleague or to your sister, don't send it. That's my rule of thumb. If you wouldn't be okay with a million people reading it in the way that it was, maybe you should warm it up a little bit. But you can't take it back ever. That's right, Tam. You put it, you know, use exclamation marks if you're happy and you're indicating positivity and warmth. Use a smiley face. You guys know I love me a good emoji. I saw something on social media the other day. They're like, the first five emojis in your emoji thing, you know, will tell you who you are. And mine were like, <laughs> smiles, hearts, heart eyes, kissy face. So look what I do for work. I'm not expecting you guys to be that way, but definitely um, warm up your emails if this resonates with you or get some feedback around that. Because if you think that is you, it is you. Because if you're self-introspecting saying, yeah, I think my emails are kind of terse or yeah. And especially in the dating world, if somebody says, do you want to go out? Don't say yeah or yep, right? Y-E-A-H. Y-E-P, yes, with an exclamation mark, smiley face, exactly. If you wouldn't want your mom to read it in the newspaper, don't send it. That's absolutely right, absolutely right. I love the emojis that are coming up, all the hearts and the high fives. Um, somebody's asking, what about when guys use a lot of emojis? I don't like it. I don't know, depends on the emojis. Maybe um, I don't know what they're sending you that you don't like it. If they're sending you like the doo-doo pile or unhappy faces or something inappropriate, I get that. Um, but don't be excessive with your emojis. Like I'll pop one in there at a certain point. Um, sometimes on Instagram posts, I'll do a, a multiples in, you know, in little chunks, but you don't need to have 27 emojis. You can have one to be effective, right? So just do one or do two in a total thing, that's it. One exclamation mark, maybe two, just warm it up so you'll absolutely be fine. So if um, if a guy sends an emoji, hopefully there's not 17 of them, um, maybe if it's a smiley face or a thumbs up, it's okay. But again, maybe they're trying to work on their communication and warm it up. So look at that, maybe with a little bit of empathy or compassion, as long as it's not crazy or weird. So, um, what is what the hell is this one? 
Is that a frying pan? With, no, it's a lollipop. Is that a lollipop, Janet? I don't know. Maybe you guys can see that. I don't know what that is either, but um, send an appropriate emoji that makes you look happy. One smiley face. Um, you know, you're not going to send hearts to your boss. I get that. Um, you don't have to do that. But anyway, you get my drift. I'm not going to emote on the emojis right now, but warm it up. Um, make sure. So those are my five tips for being likable to you. Number one, become socially generous. Number two, become positive and enthusiastic. Number three, look more approachable. Get rid of RBF, right? Um, number four, listen to understand with your whole body. Listen with your body. Listen with your mind. Listen with your heart and your soul. And number five, be thoughtful with your emails and your written correspondence to just about everybody, okay? And if your mama didn't want to read it, don't send it, okay? So those are the likability tips for the night. Who's ready for a little bit of Q&A? You guys ready? You guys, Instagram does not make things easy because they make your questions disappear in 24 hours. So I want you to know that I go in, I do a see all, I screenshot them, I send them to myself now. Now I only send the ones that I think I can get to. Um, there's so many and I love it, keep sending them. Um, so he sent only emojis, you blocked a guy who's over 60 who sent. How can you be socially generous during quarantine? Well, when you're corresponding with people, when you're talking to them, when you're messaging with them, when you're Zooming with them, you can be socially generous. You can look for what's good and tell people what's good. Be the positive, be the enthusiastic person. So that's how you can be socially generous through COVID. So I love it. Madonna, he was being psychotically optimistic, says Matt, with all his emojis. Hopefully the emojis were good stuff, right? So we'll, uh, we'll just go with the fact that the emojis were probably weird, which is why Donna said, no, thank you. Um, let me see. How, okay. So here's a question. How do you keep the connection slash sexual tension slash my attraction during online dating and quarantine? Um, you continue to communicate. There's really, there's no one right answer or not. Continue to have great conversations. Do fun things together. Maybe watch a scary movie together, right? If you get scared, you generate adrenaline. Adrenaline can build tension and attraction, right? It's fight or flight. And hopefully you'll, you'll fly to each other at some point. But keeping that tension high is great. Watch fun movies together. Cook dinner together. Have a, have a drink together. Play a game together that's really fun. You can do Arthur Aaron's 36 questions that are guaranteed to make you fall in love. I don't know if you've seen this experiment. His name, last name is Aaron, A-R-O-N. And he had um, people looking deeply into each other's eyes for several minutes. And lots and lots of people, when you do that with someone and just stare into someone's eyes, it's a little crazy how intense of the connection you will feel. You don't have to talk. You just stare into their eyes. It's like looking into someone's soul. So you can play Arthur Aaron's game. You can stare into each other's eyes, hopefully with a smile so you don't look, you look like you're going to kill somebody. And practice those questions, right, where you really get to know someone. That is how you can build connection, tension, and keep it fun and keep it moving in the right positive direction. Um, okay, next question. My earrings are like flipping out my hair here. Sorry. The hair's getting caught everywhere. I'm a mess. Okay, there. What are the red flags I should be looking for? Girl, there are so many red flags you should be looking for. I mean, right away, there's no more context to this question than that. I would say red flags to look for, um, on an immediate basis when you're looking at somebody's profile, are they negative? Are they talking about what they don't want? Are they seemingly angry or elitist or blech in their profiles? Are their messages, you know, kind of indicative of that negative sort of, you know, arrogant tone or just critical or defensive, like they wanna get into an argument with you. Those are red flags right away. And if somebody's getting too sexual or too physical right away, those are red flags also for show. So be careful of those red flags in the beginning. Um, let's see, next question. We, we dated, we dated, he's deployed, still in contact. 
advice to continue or not to continue the communication. Sometimes typos make it a little hard to read, guys. Not. I hope I'm answering your question in the right way. Um, we dated, he's deployed, still in contact. I'm, to me, deployed means this person's in the military. Um, so advise to continue or not continue the communication. I mean, if you dated and it's all good, then even if the person's overseas deployed somewhere, then keep talking to them, keep Zooming them, right? Um, Zoom chatting, not who's Zooming who. Okay, I know, that was my little joke for you guys tonight. Um, that just came to me off the top of my head. Remember that song, Who's Zoom and Who? Aretha Franklin, a child of the, the 80s, or maybe that was the 90s. Um, so here's a question. How to help someone very smart out of a dead-end relationship? Whew, this is a big one. And it's not the writer of this comment who is looking. The writer looks like she is looking for someone else. The writer's looking for a friend out of a dead end relationship. I think what's really important here is that your friend, dear writer of this question, has to feel that she is in a dead end relationship. Because once she feels like she's in a dead end relationship, I think that it becomes a very easy thing for her to be put nudged over the line to end that relationship. But if the person doesn't feel like it's a dead end relationship, you can say your piece. You can say, this isn't the right person for you. I don't think this is a good match for you. I don't think this is going anywhere. I think you should get out. But ultimately there's one person that's going to make that decision. And that's the person in that relationship. So hopefully this very smart person needs to wisen up and realize that she's in a dead end relationship. You sound like you're being a great friend and trying to help her and steer her into that direction. But if friend is is not ready to go there you're just gonna have to wait until she gets there and hopefully it's gonna happen sooner than later but you're a really good friend to take the time to write in for that question and I hope that your friend realizes what is going on and takes your advice because you are a good friend um, Next question, insight on age gaps, juicy, juicy age gaps. Example, if you're a female in college, 20s, dating guys in their mid-20s or plus with careers. Um, look, age gaps have existed from the beginning of time, usually older men to younger women. Now we know that there are lots of older women, even you know, married to politicians. Um, look at France, right? She's how many years older than him? He was her student, right? So um, age gaps are fine. You know, what the only thing with age gaps is at a certain point, someone gets older and that age kind of pushes people to different phases of life, right? That's the only issue with age gaps is experience, wisdom. But sometimes wisdom doesn't necessarily come with age, you know? But if you're, let's say, in your early to mid-20s and you're dating someone who's in their early to mid-40s, you could have a great relationship. It's just going to depend on the two people and where they are in their lives. You know, maybe the 45-year-old that's dating the 25-year-old will think it's amazing to be around somebody with that young energy with their whole life perceivably in front of them. And maybe the person who's 25 really loves having the worldliness of somebody who's 20 years older than them to help advise them. So it really, it really depends on the situation. You know, I've had clients that become my clients because they married somebody 30 years their senior. When they were 30, they married somebody who's 60 and it was the love of their life. And now they're 60 and their spouse died in their 90s, right? And they come back to the dating world again. And some of these relationships, even with those massive age gaps, have been absolutely amazing. And I can tell you that. I don't know if I would have said that when I wasn't a dating coach and I hadn't heard these amazing stories again. Um, once you have those experiences and you see that I, I've opened, I've learned so much by helping people through this. I've learned through them that everything, everything, things that sound weird to you or me can be just fine and wonderful for someone else. So age gaps are okay. It just depends on you and it depends on the person. 
Bruce is looking for someone close to his age. I see that. Good for you, Bruce. Um, and I think most women typically are looking for someone close to their age. So the world will be your dating oyster. Um, next question. I'm 60 and I'm dating. When is the right time to ask about his most recent relationships? Um, later. Remember, I tell you guys all the time, people need to earn your story, right? And just like that, you want to wait until it's the right time to earn his story as well. Um, <laughs> you should, you know, you should wait until you think it's a good time to talk about it. Don't raise it right in the beginning, but I think you can detect enough red flags from someone without even asking. And a lot of times people will just tell you about their previous relationships and you don't even have to ask. So just listen for little clues about what someone says about his previous relationships, right? Is it all her fault? It was all awful. She was terrible. You know, I'm the victim here. That might be a red flag. I mean, maybe she was horrible and maybe he really was the victim of this, but he's smart enough to hopefully not say that right up front because, you know, he's going to let you earn his story. So, um, right. When people are asking really in-depth questions, you feel like you're getting interviewed right out of the gate, right? It can feel like a deposition. I'm seeing these hilarious comments. You should charge for these sessions. Please don't charge for these sessions. I love you guys. Um, so I hope that's right. Just wait, right? You can detect the other red flags first, right? And see what this person's like. And then when it feels like you've been on several dates and it's appropriate, then you can ask about, like, tell me, like, you know, and maybe it, it, they usually come up organically, right? You don't have to say, you don't have to say, Hey, uh, I'd like to know about your exes. Can we talk about previous relationships? So you don't have to do that. So in the beginning, it feels like it's a deposition when we get right into, okay, what would you like to do with the rest of your life? Check. Tell me about all prior relationships. Check. Do you have any DUIs or felonies? Check. You know, so you don't want to, you don't want to make the date seem like that. Just have fun. Right. And somebody's asking, what if you don't want to share your story when they ask, you know, you can have a quick sound bite around your story because you don't want to look like you're hiding something, right? Keep it glib, keep it simple. In the Love Lab, we did a couple of different scripts, right? And and about how to say like what when somebody asks you, why are you still single? Or tell me about your divorce. I don't remember them right off the top of my head, but we do have those things and we help our clients with all of those kinds of things. So there, is, there are a lot of really good ways to answer the question without answering the question, if you know what I mean. So people feel like, oh, okay, that makes sense, sure. And then they move on, right? So um, that's what I would say to that. You definitely don't want to feel like you're interrogating somebody. Um, let's see. Next question. Um, is it right to ask the person what they're looking for in a relationship? And if yes, when? Um, again, I think you can listen for that, right? I think a lot of these things, guys, you don't have to sometimes beat it over the head and ask it directly right away. If you listen to understand and if you listen for the clues, most likely you're going to get the fact, maybe this person has been in a lot, lot of long-term relationships or they haven't or whatever it is, you'll start to get that. But if you don't, if you are really lost after several dates on what, the person is looking for in a relationship, then at a certain point when you feel like it's appropriate and not like an interview, you can ask the question like, you know, so, you know, what, what have your previous relationships been like? Like what drew you to this person? You can even ask it in more oblique ways and saying, what are you looking for in a relationship? Right. And so, and a lot of times online dating, people write that stuff in their profiles. Sometimes people will say they're just looking for something casual and not serious. And if they say they're looking for something casual and not serious, they're just looking to date around Around, believe them okay so people will usually tell you you can listen for the clues if you are truly listening to understand so um, I love how it's like answer questions like I can't read all the comments while I'm talking but I'm seeing some interesting chats about answering questions like politicians do so so yeah we help our clients to do that so we did some scripts at the love lab I think we took three to five of the hardest dating questions that you could ask on the date and we we wrote out scripts for people. So if that's interesting to you, get in on the love lab because I can't remember what they were off
off the top of my head. Lindsay wrote them, but they're, um, they were amazing. Okay, let me see. Next question. I'm on match, four weeks. Lots of likes, but no conversations. Why don't men reach out? Well, that's a great question. Um, if you're getting likes, what I would tell you to do is send a quick email to respond to the like, hey, you know, thanks for the like, I see you love to sail, you know, have you been able to sail now that things are opening up, right? Just do that, and that's how a lot of guys, met, a lot of times, ladies, men can be better at playing the numbers game with online dating than women, right? They send out lots of little generic dating for, you know, the generic emails and the generic likes, but that's their way of putting worms into the water, right? Because men are expected to do the communicating up front. They're expected to, you know, to be the first one. And so they do that. So be, take the bull by the horns, take the steering wheel and send a little bit of an email back. And so that's how you can start the conversation. And then if they don't respond or they respond in a super lame way, then, then go, sorry. I see, I don't know if this video is pausing in and out. Hold on, let me do this. Okay, let's see. Okay, I plugged my phone into a charger. I hope that you guys are now, I hope it was not my internet or my phone going on low because I don't see mine freezing out. So I'm sorry if it is mine, I just put it in a charger. So I hope that solves it. So thank you for, um, thank you for being patient with that if that was happening. I'm glad you, I'm glad you told me. So, um, okay, good. I thought it was, okay, maybe that's all it is. Tell me if it still acts funky. I know we only have eight minutes left. Um, thanks for telling me. <laughs> so, okay, um, no problem, Lucy. Thanks for the heads up, I appreciate you. Let's see, how to get over an emotional affair with a coworker who was married. Oh, my heart goes out to you. It's so hard. Nobody starts out um, trying to get into a, an emotional relationship you know, that starts out as a friendship with a coworker. Um, it's so hard when the person who's married continues that and then we get sucked into that and sometimes we don't even know that that's going on we just feel like it's all good and you like your colleague um it's really hard to get over i mean my advice would normally be if you can not see this person and if you really want to get over them the way to get over people is out of sight out of mind get them out of your phone no texting no calling no seeing but if this is a colleague that you have to see it's going to be a lot harder to do that. I think that if you can minimize the extracurricular contact that you have with this person and have that conversation that this isn't this isn't going to work for you because you said how to get over an emotional affair with a coworker who's married. Um, I think that that's your way to do it is just to stay out of touch with this person permanently, minimize your contact at work, but then don't talk to them on the outside. Everything does heal a little bit with time. And so I really hope that you can heal gently and in peace um, with that. So the workplace romances can be difficult, but you guys, so many of us spend more time at work than we do anywhere else, right? Where people spend eight, 10, 12 hours in their office, right? So, you know, there's always the people don't dip your quill in the company ink, but ultimately I've seen a lot of people through my practice find people at work, right? Not your boss or not, you know, someone who is otherwise unavailable or somebody that works for you, then, you know, HR yourself out of that situation so that you can date. I've seen everything happen. I've worked in the corporate world for many years. I see how this stuff goes. So don't necessarily rule out work. You know, you know, it can be hard. Um, but you know, if, if, you may find the love of your life at work. Just make sure that they are available to you so that you don't have to um, withstand the heartbreak of they can't be with you, right? So, okay. Um, how do I know when to start dating again? Broke up with a boyfriend of a year two months ago. Um, start dating again when you feel like you've processed the breakup. Do you know why this person, do you know why 
you broke up. What was his responsibility? What was your responsibility? So that you don't do it again, that's number one. So understand, is there a pattern? Do you need help around that? And then number two, when the thought of dating excites you, that's when you should get back into the dating world. There's no set amount of time, right? For some people it takes two weeks, two days. For some people it takes two years or two decades to do this. So um, let's see, what else? What else? I hope the phone, is the phone better now, you guys? I hope it is. I get worried about these kinds of things. Um, how do I finally start to make the decision to start dating after 10 years? It feels very scary. Um, don't be scared. Dating is a means to an end. And if you're really scared, ask yourself what you're scared of. Are you scared of rejection? Are you scared of somebody not liking you back? Are you scared of liking the wrong person? What are you afraid of? And then you have to deal with that issue and you have to take it, get in front of that issue. If you're, Because anything you do from a place of fear typically is not going to put you in a good space, right? So get a, ther get a therapist, get a village around you, a support group, a coach, coaches, whatever you need to help you understand those fears and what's triggering you to get back into the dating world, right? Maybe you are scared of rejection. Maybe you're afraid of picking the wrong person again. I've had people come to me out of four failed marriages and then they find the fifth one and it is for real. And I go to the weddings and they're amazing, right? And so love can happen, but you have to do the work, right? You have to do that inside work. You have to fix your picker. This is the stuff we do. This is why I don't match make people. People ask, what do you do? We help fix people's pickers. We help build their confidence. We help you get back out there. We help you to look inside. Then before you go outside and then you transform your checklist to someone that's going to make you happy versus doing the same thing over and over again, which is the definition of insanity, right? And that is why we do what we do. I won't match make. People will tell me, oh my gosh, you know, matchmaking is, you know, so lucrative compared to coaching. I don't care. You don't start a date coaching business to become a billionaire or a millionaire. You start it because you love helping people find love. And the way to really help people find love is not putting more people in front of them to make the same mistakes all over again. It's really reaching in and saying, okay, the common denominator here is me. Am I afraid of this? Why am I afraid of this? Let me get some help around this. Let me get some support. We are like a safety net around our clients, right? You, Nothing bad's gonna happen to you if I'm in your camp. Trust me, I am strapped to you like this. Nothing bad's gonna happen. You're not gonna get rejected or left at the altar, right? Because you were going through the Bella magnifying glass. And that is a very well-honed, experienced magnifying glass, right? So let's see if I can get through. Oh my God, is it really 58 minutes? You guys are the best. Um, easy question here. Um, after you've been texting for some days in a dating app, what's the right time to give your number? Get a Google Voice number and then give them that number. After you've had some exchanges and you feel like you have a rapport, you know, it could be a day, it could be a couple of days, right? Give them your Google Voice number, have a phone chat. If the phone chat goes well, go to the video date. That is what you do, okay? So it's definitely, it's good to take it off text. You wanna hear somebody's voice, then putting them on a video chat turns that 2D person into a 3D person, right? That's what you're looking for, right? You, and then you can really gauge what this person is like. Um, I think this will be my last question. Just divorced and I'm 50 years old, stay-at-home mom. Will men be put off by the stay-at-home mom fact? No. Why would they be put off by that? You were doing the most important job in the world, and that's raising human beings and being a mom. I am a mom of two kids, and it is the hardest job in the world, but it's the best job in the world, right? And so you're a stay-at-home mom. If anybody looks down on that, Red flag, get him out. So no, there is no red flags for you, my stay-at-home mom. Own yourself, own your life. I've had many stay-at-home moms come through my practice and they are in happy, healthy, amazing relationships at this point, okay? So um, a guy got mad at you for using Google Voice. Bye, bye Felicia, bye Felipe. So here's what I would tell you. I'm getting the one minute and 43 second mark. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here with me. I 
to next week, I have an NPR. I think I thought it was this week, but it's actually next week. I think this IG Live is going to be 6.30 to 7.30. I'll put reminders in feed and in stories. So if you have your Bella calendar set, it's going to be a little bit earlier. Um, so you guys, definitely, if you like the scripts and the things we're talking about, go to my website, check out the Love Lab. It was freaking awesome. It's an investment in yourself. You will be, you will have profiles for Match and Bumble. You will have your photos curated for you. You will have better profiles than anybody else online. You'll get the scripts. You'll get with me for three hours. It's amazing. And Lindsay, it was awesome. So I love you guys. I will see you next week. DM me or next week I'll post a stickers question Hold your questions until next week because we'll take them all. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the happy anniversary wishes and for all the kind words. I love all of you. See you next Thursday and I will have some more good news for you. Sign up for the newsletter if you want the anniversary story. SmartDatingAcademy.com contact form. Bye guys.